Hi, my name is Lynn Dong and I'm a senior cloud engineer at NebulaWorks. Today I will be talking about configuring OIDC on HashiCorp Vault. If you're curious what OIDC stands for, it's an acronym for Open ID Connect. We need OIDC because it enables organizational security through authorization and authentication. So what's the difference between the two? Authorization verifies what access you have and authentication verifies your identity and if you are, who you say you are. So why do we need authorization and authentication? For two reasons. First, being security. And number two is we need an automated login process that's scalable. So let me paint a scenario for you. So let's say we have a CEO of a company and Jane, who is a new hire of that company. When it comes to authorization, we don't want Jane to have the same kinds of access as the CEO does and vice versa. For authentication, we don't want Jane to be able to mask herself as a CEO and gain access to the privileges that he has. So what's the worst case scenario that can come from this? Well, Jane, who just started with the company, she has the same access as a CEO and can see the same things that he does with the same login credentials. She finds his username and password to his bank accounts and she logs into those and wires money into an offshore bank account of her own. So now the CEO is completely out of his money and he doesn't know who did it. With OIDC configured, none of this would even happen in the first place and that covers security. So now we know that the token or credentials that both of these guys are using has been compromised. Not only do we need to revoke that token and create a new one, we now need to manually disperse it to every individual who needs it. And that is a very tedious process. With OIDC, it's automated and it's scalable. You just set it and you don't have to worry about it again. So that covers reason number two. All right, so just a quick history. Before the turn of the century, we were just using proprietary stuff to achieve authorization authentication. And in 2000, we got SAML, which is Security Assertion Market Language. And then 2012, we had OAuth 2.0, which was really good for authorization and mobile apps. And in 2014, we have what we're going to do today, which is OIDC. If you guys want to know more about the history of OAuth and authorization authentication, I have some links down below in the description. So I'm going to hop into the OAuth and OIDC flow. Before that, um, I'm going to be using some jargon that you may or may not know, which would be words like scopes, claims, relying party, identity provider, stuff like that. If you don't understand those terms, then I provide a link below in the description that you can check out. And without further ado, I'm gonna hop into the OAuth flow. So over here, I have the user or just the client who's trying to log into the relying party, which in this case is Vault. And the identity provider will be provided by G Suite or Google. So the first step would be that the user will try to log into Vault with a specific role, such as the admin role. From there, Vault takes them to the authorization URL, which is Google. And from there, they log in with their email address or their domain. That could be a business email address or a personal email address, whichever they need access to in order to access Vault. After logging in with their email, Google will ask them, do you allow Vault to have access to your email, your contacts, your personal info information? That will be the authentication piece. And the user will say yes, and Google will do the redirection back to Vault with the authorization token. So now that Vault has the authorization token, it attaches the policies that come with the administrative role and pack that into a new token. 
and pass this vault token along with this user's identity taken from Google. And from this point on, this user can use this vault token to access vault. So with that, let's hop into the demo. All right, so here I am in my terminal. So there's a couple things that you need to do before you get started on configuring OIDC on Vault. First of all, I'm just going to assume that you already have a Vault server running and you already have some policies in there. So for example, if I do a Vault policy list, I already have three policies in there called default, nsadmin, and root. If I were to read, I'm going to be using nsadmin and I'm going to attach that to the role that I'll create for OIDC. But the capabilities is basically just everything and it's for all paths in vaults. So I'm going to get clone a repo and I have the link down in the description. It's called Ansible Vault Namespaces and we're going to be using this to configure the namespaces, or well, just the root namespace in this case, with OIDC, the configuration and the role. So let's go ahead and clone this. I also want to show that before I get started, I'm not going to be able to access anything in Vault. So I'm going to have a blank token. And if I try to list my auth methods, it'll say permission denied. So once I get everything working, we should be good to go. I'll log in with my uh, work email. And I should be able to run Vault auth list and see everything again. All right, so I've cloned down the repo. And if we check out the README, make sure you install the dependencies like HVAC and Ansible modules HashiVault. I recommend setting up a virtual M for this. So I'm going to activate one that I already have. All right. And if we look inside here, we have the namespace create.yaml, which is our main playbook. Um, and then what I want to do is to set up my configuration. So first, we're going to be using Google as the identity provider. So we'll need to create a Google project. So right here, I'm just going to name my project whiteboard demo vault. And this is fine. All right, let's go into that project. So let's go ahead and create the OAuth credentials. First, we need to create the consent screen. This will be an internal application, and we're, we'll just name it Vault. Save that over here. Let's go back to the credentials and create it. Vault is a web application, so I'll create that. And here, I have my client ID and secret. I'll be able to see that later. So let's just set up the URI, URI and redirect URIs. So for the URI, my vault address is um, ld-vault.sandbox.awsnebularworks.com. Yours will be where, wherever your vault address is. And my redirects, are right over here. So 
So this first one that I just pasted is for the UI, and this localhost port 8250 will be the redirect for um, login using the CLA. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. Cool, so let's go back to our Ansible Vault Namespaces repository and let's set up the configuration. So I'm gonna cd into configs, auths, oidc, config, and here we have template.json. So let's copy template.json and create um, what do we want to name it? Whiteboard demo.json. All right, so the ODC discover URL will just be the client ID. So I'll copy and paste that here. I'm just kidding. That's not it. The OID discovery URL is actually, let's see if I can find it. Um, HTTPS accounts.google.com. And over here, the client ID will be right over here. Client secret, paste that as well. And the default role, I'm gonna name it WB role for whiteboard role. All right. If you guys are wondering where whiteboard role is coming from, we're gonna create that configuration right now. So let's go back to the roles directory and let's make a copy of template.json and name it whiteboard role.json. All right, so the allowed redirect URIs I had pasted it in here. Yours will be somewhat similar. I've set up my vault on Kubernetes and set up um, node port service. So my port looks a little weird. Yours will probably be port 8200. So let's copy this. And also copy the localhost one for CLI logins. All right, for bound audiences, that will be the client ID. User claim, we're gonna do sub. And for the token policies, like I showed you guys earlier, I already have one called ns underscore admin, and that's the one that we're gonna use. All right. So the last piece of this is let's create the configuration for just the namespace in general. So let's go back a few directories. I think this is good. All right, actually let's go back into configs. And it's gonna look similar to namespaces config.yaml, but I'm just gonna copy over one that I already have. It's very simple. All right, so whiteboard demo. So I'm only gonna be configuring the root namespace and I'm gonna be adding the policy called NSAdmin 
if it's not already there. And we're going to enable just a secret engine. We're not going to go over this, but it'd be cool to show you guys the potential of this Ansible repo. And the purpose of this demo is we're going to enable the OIDC auth method. And we're going to use the whiteboard demo.json that we just created and the whiteboard role that we also created. So let's copy that over. So and put it right in here. So now we have whiteboard demo.yaml. Okay, going back to the root of Ansible Vault namespaces, let's test out our code. So we're going to run Ansible Playbook, and you can actually pass in dash e namespace config file and point to your specific config file, which would be whiteboard demo.yaml. If we actually take a look in here, namespace create, by default, it's going to look for the config file called namespaces. And since we're using whiteboard demo.yaml, I'm just going to pass it in from the command line. All right. I also already have my env environment variable set up. But as noted in the README of Ansible Vault namespaces, you should set up your vault address and your vault token. And that should be good. Oops. config whiteboard demo dot yaml. Hmm. Oh, just kidding. Namespace create dot yaml. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so looking at the error here, it looks like you can't find this configuration file. So let me just try passing in an absolute path to it. So Ansible, and we're going to pass. Nope, that's not what I wanted. All right, let's try this. I can't find it. All right, let's just change it here. So then namespace create. And instead of namespaces underscore config dot YAML, we'll do whiteboard underscore demo dot YAML. And we'll try that out. Oh, I've been using underscore and it's a dash. Awkward. Okay. So, let's just change that real quick. Cool. We got through that. Nope. Missing client token. Let me 
export my vault token real quick. Uh, I guess I'll show you guys. I'll have to rotate it after this recording. And run this playbook again. Cool. So we were able to enable the KV engine and name it Banana, as well as enable the OIDC auth engine. So now let me unexport my vault token. And first I'll show you logging in through the CLI. So if I were to try and run vault commands, I shouldn't be able to, permission denied. So let's try logging in, and the method we will be using is OIDC, and we set up a default role, which was the WB underscore demo role. So it automatically sends me the authorization URL to log in, and I'm going to sign in with my work email. Looks like I'm signed in. So. We're good to go on that front, and I'm now authenticated. And I should be able to now use vaults with this new token. Cool. Looks like I have some other engines already enabled, including the OIDC one that we just created. If we also look at the vault secrets, we can see the banana KV engine that we just created as well. All right. So next I'll show you logging in via OIDC using the UI. So I'm going to open up an incognito tab and go over to my vault address. Alright, so from here you are going to use the OIDC method. And from there, you should be able to see this button called sign in with Google. And we can leave it blank because we had already configured a default role. And there you go. We're all good. So I've used um, Ansible in order to configure this, but by no means you can do it in other ways, such as Terraform or doing it all manually through vault commands. Um, and then also, I did use Google as the identity provider, but there are definitely other identity providers out there, such as AWS IAM credentials and Google as well. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for the latest DevOps content. Until next time.